Hey guys, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video with Stephen Cornett. Today we are out on my front field. We're starting to develop the front four acres here. Mostly been focused on the back of the homestead, um, but now it's time to start looking out to this because I've mentioned in my other videos, the sheep are coming out here for winter. This four acres is gonna be their winter forage. They're gonna help me bring more fertility to this land and help me uh, keep down the weeds and the grasses and with no gasoline. So right now my buddy Bruce is out there bush hogging and I'm gonna show you guys up close what a bush hog is and all the process that we're doing uh, in, order, in order to set this up very nicely. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the grass and what we're trying to achieve by bush hogging this and how we're preparing it. So first guys, let's just take a look at the grass and what we have going on here. So the fescue that is the main grass out here and in tennessee that is a major grass perennial grass that we have um, and it is up about knee height or even higher which is is fine but we also have a ton of these noxious weeds things that we don't really want on our field we want luscious pasture grass so orchard grass and fescue and clover and all that uh, amazing stuff that's great feed for our animals. Uh, even way over there, that's about seven foot tall. So the stuff on this field has been growing about a, a, a year and it has not been cut. Initially, when we moved onto this property, I had it hayed, a uh, nearby farmer wanted it for his cows. And at that time I didn't know anybody and I just needed to get it cut. So uh, that's what happened, but we will not be haying this property any longer because that just robs the nutrients from the soil, takes it somewhere else. So. Uh, definitely not doing that anymore, but it was great to have my neighbor do that initially. So now what we are doing, we're cutting the grass, the entire field to 12 inches. So what I did is I just took a ruler, we lifted up the bush hog and I measured to the blade about 12 inches so that we will get a very tall cut on this. It's gonna knock down all these bad weeds, knock them out of, the, out of there. Most of them already went to seed and stuff, so they won't be able to come back in the winter but these perennial grasses here in Tennessee, they are gonna grow until about December and provide more stored food source for the sheep as they come out here. Because the goal with the sheep is to not have to bring in any inputs in order to feed them, which will be absolutely no problem with four acres of this field for only seven sheep. So here's a look at what happened to the grass after he bush hogged right here at that 12 inches. And what's actually gonna happen to the grass when you hit it like that, especially all this tall stuff, underneath the soil, those plants are gonna drop roots. And that is gonna be carbon that feeds the soil biology under there. And then all of this biomass that's just been building for the last year is gonna be dropped on the soil to decompose and uh, help to make this a much more healthy pasture. And the goal, of course, is to increase the organic matter here and this is gonna be a great way to do that. You know, this field has been abused, not taken care of. It's been hayed for many years. So we wanna get back into working condition and these are regenerative farming techniques that will achieve that. Okay guys, so I just walked all the way to the under, other end and here's what Bruce is doing. He's cutting the field in half and then he's making passes along each side. And this is Bruce's first time doing a bush hog this large. He is a new farmer. And I actually met him through from the field, um, Curtis Stone, the urban farmer, his private website where I also make content. And if you guys aren't on there and you want access to some of the best information on the internet uh, when it comes to farming, definitely sign up for that is well worth the cost. And you can actually get uh, one free hour consulting with me or Dakota Cohen or David, David Blanchard, who's a microgreens absolute expert um, just wonderful guys um, that are you know I'm honored to even be on there with those guys honestly so um, that's just another cool benefit and that's how we met I consulted for Bruce he's starting up a market garden he's adding uh, pastured poultry and things like that so I helped him uh, to plan out his property we found out we lived pretty close to each other so that's how we originally met very thankful to Bruce uh, for doing this for me and he's getting some great practice um, 
learning how to do this. He just fixed his bush hog so that uh, he'd be able to do this. So thank you, thank you, Bruce. So here's how it's looking at that 12 inch cut. Um, I like this. I definitely wouldn't want to go any lower uh, just because we're getting less sunlight energy and I want the grass to grow back uh, as good as it can before December. So wonderful. So one of the things I did before Bruce got here, this outer perimeter fence is pretty jacked up. My corner here and also at the other end is knocked down. So I wanted to make sure that this, this steel wire was not gonna get run over by him. So I got all that up and out of there. And one of the big projects for winter, if I can afford it, uh, so please buy through my links guys, <laughs> I appreciate it, is to put up uh, a new perimeter fence out here I'm thinking about going with timeless fencing. My uh, other local friend, Blake, uh, is using that at his, and that's kind of like the most modern, awesome fence to use. It's made from fiberglass, and it lasts a very long time, and it's not too expensive. So I need to get a good perimeter fence here that I could make hot, and then I could also tie into that to run my nets off, to run reels from, and all that good stuff. So that's kind of the plan right now. I'm in the planning phases of setting up the fence for out here. Um, so hopefully um, I'll be able to accomplish that this winter. Um, because next year, as far as my big farm plan goes, you know, my homestead will be finished, uh, that part of it. I'm gonna be planting fruit, tr fruit trees and all that. But out here on this field, It'll probably be another year before I really start to plant my plan of what trees and I would like to put a pond in right here or a couple ponds even. Building another farm, especially a much larger farm, it takes quite a long time. And during this next year, uh, my sheep will be out here and grazing things down and maybe I'll get some other you know, pigs that are better for pasture out here, get some more animals to disturb, drop manure and increase the um, soil health out here. So lots to do before I'm building a bigger, cooler farm. So definitely we'll keep you guys updated on all that. And one thing I just remembered, I really need to do a soil test out here. So I think my buddy has a soil probe, so I'll, I'll, I'll borrow that and send off some soil tests because I really want, we really need to show evidence, right, of this working. I don't, you know, obviously I already know that all these techniques work, but um, having the evidence, being able to show those tests. It's just another thing that we can use to show the strength of regenerative agriculture techniques and why this is the future of farming. So we did have one major disaster right before we finished, but it's not the end of the world. So it overheated because all of the seeds and all that junk that was on the plants got in there just clogged up the air circulation to the radiator and it couldn't cool, so it overheated. Um, cleaning all that out, adding some more antifreeze, and then we'll finish this off. All right, so we're back about five days after bush hogging it, and we just got three days of rain too, so it was like perfect timing for cutting this, and the grass was able to get some nice more growth from that rain. So I'm super happy that I went with that higher cut length, and I definitely would not have gone lower because we only had the month of November to get a little bit more growth until the grass stops growing. If I would have cut it maybe in September, maybe the 10 inches would have been better. Um, but this ended up, I think, being perfect, and we'll find out as we go deeper into the winter and see if I still like that. But uh, you have to go with your gut and what you think is gonna work and then adjust from there in the future. So let's take a look at the grass. It is just absolutely gorgeous. This is such good feed for the sheep and I'm, they're dying to get out here. Um, but first, they gotta make their way down the hill and they still got this front lawn area to take care of as well. So it'll probably be about a week and a half before they actually get to here. And Millie certainly likes the field. She is loving it out here. <laughs> 